Good to be honest, that's yeah. kind of like a street dream. They'll kick me out. Yeah. They'll say, get the f out of here. People like that, inspiring for, for me. And that's the power of photography. Yo, we're back with another episode of Walkie Talkie. Bleep bleep. Got the homie G Moon. Welcome to Sunset Park, yep. Brooklyn. Let the people know where you're from and what we're shooting today. Born and raised in Chinatown, New York City. I live out here in Sunset Park, South Brooklyn. We're shooting with this Leica MP. Just trying to focus on this camera. Paying no mind to other cameras. What's going on today? Uh, today is about the midpoint of um, the Chinese New Year celebration, which lasts 15 days. It's a different vibe out here. It's a little more quieter. Everyone around here is mainly um, just living, you know, like trying to make a living out here. You don't, you don't see a lot of foreigners. You don't see a lot of young Asian Americans here getting food or stuff like Chinatown in Manhattan. It's, it's a little different. You got some coffees? So we're gonna drink some coffee first and then we're, <laughs> and then we're gonna get shooting. What's cool is like some people hit me up and like, yo, I'm gonna be out here. And um, usually I'd be like, yo, meet me at this time, whatever. But I'm chilling with you, so I'm like, yeah, I see you out there. I feel like photography makes me dig deeper into like my culture and other cultures too. I'm not, I'm not just trying to take a photo and be out, you know? Wait, how often do you come here to shoot? Like up and down this, uh, around this neighborhood? I mean, I will come out here just to get food or stuff. So like, if I'm getting food, I'm shooting too. I will say maybe three, three days a week, maybe. Some days I might not get any, anything good, you know? So just gotta come back. So a lot of the Chinese people here are from a specific area in China. They're mostly Fuzhou people. They speak Mandarin, so. I can't conversate with a lot of these people. Sometimes I go into a restaurant I never ate at and I can't even communicate with them because they don't speak English and I don't speak Mandarin. I speak Cantonese. So I only go to the spots that I could, I could, they, could they speak Cantonese. What are the main differences between like Sunset Park, uh, Manhattan Chinatown and like Flushing? So in Flushing, most, most of the Chinese people there are, I would say majority is Taiwanese people. And that's a whole different part of China too. And for me, cause I'm Chinese, I could tell uh, the features, like kind of where you're from, you know. How long you been taking pictures for? Um, I've been taking pictures for a long time, but not like the way I'm, I'm taking pictures now because I've grown, you know? I used to play around with a lot of point and shoot cameras. I went through all that. Now I don't really, really focus on that. You know, once in a while, my carrier point and shoot, but I used to shoot like, I went through the whole Fuji film phase, kind of gradually worked up to this. Always wanted to shoot with a Leica, you know? It's an art to it. How come so many New York City street photographers or photographers have Leicas? To be honest, that's yeah. kind of like a street dream. It's kind of like a street dream. It's like, if you shoot with a Leica and you know what you're doing, I mean, in the beginning, I was fucking everything up. I ran through Matt Rose, you know, you gotta go through that. It takes a lot of work to get to, to actually know how to use it, I feel like, to get it really in tune, you know? This spot right here, it's kind of early, but my, my, my dad hangs out here, right? That's his mahjong spot. So if it's like, like it's too early right now, right, for them? It's like they have dim sum, they chill, and they meet up like around like 12, one o'clock. And like, there'd be like four tables down there, everyone just chilling. Smoking, just chilling, and he enjoying their life, retired. You go in there and take photos? Sometimes I do. Not always because Chinese people are very superstitious. Mm. You have to wait, you know? You can't go in there and just fucking start popping off. They'd be like, what are you doing? Like, every little thing, they think about it as like, like a superstitious thing. You take a picture of me, like, you might give me bad luck. Or you might give me good luck, who knows? Right. So if you start taking photos and you start losing, that's, that's your fault. They'll kick me out. Yeah, that's like, your get the fuck out of here. Get out of here. It's kind of cool, you don't usually see other photographers here. Especially like an older man like that. I've never seen him before. Yeah. I never done this before. Oh really? You is it first why? time? You know why? Because I always thought this shit was lame. Because I grew up playing firecrackers, like real firecrackers. Happy New Year, Sunny Philo. 
Go. <laughs> no, it got done. Damn, I'm gonna get a refund. Hey, not working. Yeah, working. Yeah, I did it. Yeah. I'm stuck. Yeah, stop. What? What? I read you, read you. Yeah, my ears ringing. Also, for the people who don't know, 8th Avenue is the busiest street in in Sunset Park for like the Chinese community. When when you talk, when I talk to my mom, I'd be like, like I tell her in Chinese, I'll meet me on 8th Avenue. Chinese people love the number eight. You're gonna see like these little food carts here, right? Like this lady here, been here forever. The lady, every day she's out here, yo. Doesn't matter if it's raining, snowing, hailing. Every fucking day she's out here. Like hardest worker in Sunset Park. Let's go say what's up. Aye, sunny ho. Hi, hi, hi. Hi, hi, hi. Hi, hi, I said like you know. Yeah, she mad at me because I haven't been eating this. When I'm on 8 Avenue, I like to shoot with my 35. It's kind of the perfect focus length for this surrounding. Like if I'm on a street, I can still get some of the surroundings with a 35. What else do you shoot with? Like if I'm in um, in Chinatown, Manhattan, I'll throw my 28 on. If I'm in, it really depends. Like I have a backup. Like I have, I have a 50 in here, maybe just in case. I want to switch it up. So this is this is the pace I usually walk when I'm shooting. This is the pace I'm usually walking. On. I I don't like to like I don't like to move too fast because you miss you miss stuff. You shoot uh black and white? Yeah, I shoot only black and white. I never put a color row in this. Like why black and white for you? Um for me it's more like before before I I started taking photography like to the level I'm at now. I used to do color black and white like I always have to think before I leave the crib, like what the fuck, like which camera I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna shoot color today or black and white. So I told myself uh, two years ago, I'm like, I'm only gonna shoot black and white. That's it. And just stick with it because you'll be surprised with the results. And I'm happy with my results. Not, not wrong with color uh, film or, or color digital, but for me, like the way I see things, my perspective, if I want to look back on a photo that I took, I want to see it in black and white. It's more classic for me, classic New York. <laughs> sometimes I be seeing my mom's friends, and I be, you know, saying what's up, but sometimes they don't recognize me. <laughs> you feel like you, you know or see a lot of Chinese American photographers? So there's a very... I actually didn't really know about him before, and I wish I did. His name is Corky Lee, photographer from Chinatown. Like American, like he speaks fluent English, you know. Uh, he passed away, uh, I think about a year or two ago, RIP. I like his style, like he'll, he'll jump on, on top of the, the fucking traffic light and get a shot. Like, and he's like 50 something or 60 something, I don't know. But people like that is inspiring for, for me because what he's doing is kind of like inspiring me to do what I do documenting this, you know? Because if, if, I, if I'm not doing it and show you people or show whoever that's, that's gonna see my work in the future, how are people gonna know? And that's the power of photography. Excuse me?
The guy in the puffer is the owner of this restaurant. That's Chasu and Ada Avenue. I mean, for me, that's what I think. My goal is like, I wish I could, I don't wish, I'm trying to uh, train my camera to be as fast as my eye. Like, I've been missing shots sometimes, right? So like, one day I was going here to get, get some food and his son is over here doing homework on the, on the table. In my childhood, I, uh, for a small period of time, my parents was doing a restaurant business. So I used to be on the table doing my homework too in the restaurant. So I know how that felt, that kid, you know? But sometimes when I go into these places, they're always staring at me. It's kind of kind of hard to take a photo. You know what, what I'm starting to learn and think, think that um, the, way, the reason why they don't like photos is because they don't really know what we're doing with it. Like, one day, when I'm really ready, hopefully I could put out a book focusing on Sunset Park and, and gift, maybe gift a few to like, like the lady over there, you know, like, so they know what I do. A lot of these ladies, even my mom don't know, like, like she know I'm out, like, taking pictures, I always have my camera on me, but she don't really understand the, cause they're old school, you know? So one day it's like, that's my goal. I wanna like, be like, this is, this is what I've been working on. And it's art, you know, like, even though I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not gonna be a fucking millionaire from this shit, I'm not gonna make bread out of it, but it's passion. Doing what we love. You hate that when you get into a rhythm and you run out. But you know that's why people carry two two cameras, so they could have um, either a different focal lengths or just having another one ready. But sometimes carrying two cameras for the whole day is fucking heavy. I, I can't read Chinese, but I know some words. So this is a blessing, right? This is very popular during this time. Um, so a lot of Chinese at their home, at the door, they have this at the door. And when it's the New Year's, you take down the old one, you put up the new one for new blessings. And some people like to flip it over. When they flip it over, that means blessing has arrived. So sometimes you see this word, it's flipped over. What are some things that you're like struggling with, with your photography that you're trying to get over right now? I feel now? like my main struggle that I think about nowadays, I want to put out something, right? But I feel like, and I feel like other people could relate to this because I still want to keep collecting work until I'm ready. I don't feel like it's all there yet. I gotta take that step. But that's what's beautiful about like what we do is like we think ahead and have these like projects in mind and conquer and achieve them. You know, these are the steps that I feel like we have to um, take to learn more about yourself as a photographer. So the lion dance is um, mainly for to get rid of the bad evil spirits and bring in new blessings. And they're not dragons. A lot of people think they're dragons, but they're not. There's a big one over here. There's a Bless the line with some lucky red envelope. You bless them, they bless you back. That's what my mom told me. Hey, happy new year, sunny five up, sunny five up. It takes three people to hold down that line there. That shit probably weighs like, maybe like 70 pounds. Maybe more, I'm not sure, cause I never seen a head that big. Pause. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> When's the last time you were back in China? So I was there when uh, COVID broke out. Oh, shit. I, almost, I almost got stuck over there. Um, I usually go back every two years. 
um, around this time. You know, got to go back and pray, pray in our old, our old home where my parents grew up. Keep in touch with the, the villagers, you know. You ever photograph out there? I have, but not, not like the way I'm photographing now. Like, I can't wait to go back. You're always growing as a photographer, so like, that's why every day you want to go back out because you're always learning. Your eye is getting better every day. How you feel? Feel good? <laughs> I wish I could hold one too. Yo, she's about to shoot us. Yo, when people start aiming at you, you gotta duck, bro. They doing it right, you know why? Look at this shit. They buy it, right? And they play it and they sell it together. Like, that's how you gotta do it. All right, G, let the people know where they can find your work, where they, wherever they can show you some love. Uh, you can find my work on my website, gmoonnyc, G-E-E, moonnyc.com. Hope to put out my best work up there. Hope to put some something physical out, something good this year, for sure, this year. And uh, we'd love to just share my, my culture through my lens and have something physical for people to have to keep. Hopefully I can inspire some people out there uh, to kind of dig a little deeper in your photography and um, not, just, not just going around snapping photos and getting away with a picture, but more about telling a story with your photos. It's been a pleasure, real fun today, showing you around my hood. <laughs> Let's go. 8 Avenue, Batai Do. Oh, young guy. Now when they see us in the streets, all they want to do is take pics, and I'm like, okay.